presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robert, how you doing, man? Yes, good, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to Morning. let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information information yesterday on the small business grant. I'm a small business owner and primary breadwinner for my family. And if I can get that money, it's going to really mean a lot to my family. So that's awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, well, well, listen, man, we appreciate you growling and proud with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> What's going on, guys? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, I believe he'll be back tomorrow. Let's take a look at what we have going on in the markets today. Uh, the ES Mini up about 1.06%. The Russell down slightly. Uh, NQ's up 1.3%. The YM up 0.7%. Gold, we're seeing just a little bit of a pull down back in gold. But, of course, we have seen this uh, meteoric rise in gold over the past uh, month, I would say. Well, beginning March. One miner that's super interesting to look at. Now, Harmony's down a little bit, but I mean, this has been, you know, from around this time period, something like a 48% rise. It's nuts, right? I mean, this is actually going back more into like December and stuff like that. But this has done so well over a certain holding period uh, that we've had. Uh, really impressive to see some of the gold mining stocks do well. Newmont. Now, we were down again today, but again, I remember we were talking a little bit. We had a caller come in right around this level. Uh, again, this is on some lower volume coming down, and we just shot back up. So it's good for the gold guys at the time being. Of course, we're going to have Tim Ord on a little later today, um, and I'm sure he'll have plenty to say about where gold is going. Of course, him and Tom were calling. Uh, this kind of move up in gold for quite a while, and uh, we saw it. I mean, that's pretty nice. I mean, check this out, like all-time highs on this thing, just right under that 2200 level. Silver itself not doing as attractively, uh, just off about 1.68% right now, still around that 2430 level. Copper uh, right under $4 on the contract. Crude, crude's getting locked out around this level at 77.69. This is nice. You know, everything that we're looking at today, it's important to look at it in the context of the CPI that had come out, right? And we'll take a look at that. In a second here, uh, this was the commodity that I was worried about, right? And now, of course, this is volatile, so it's not part of core CPI. Um, and I was concerned that we were going to see increases in oil prices, right? And we really had seen these guys stick around these low 70s and then to shoot up, and we've stayed uh, pretty consolidated in the 77, 68 area. Uh, and we're actually a little bit lower today as well. And we can talk a little bit about why that's getting locked, but first let's look at CPI. Um, again, this is the, the CPI was a little bit higher, right? But the context of all this is not for May cuts, right? Obviously not for March cuts, because we're already into March. But believe the market had really been looking at a June cut, right? And some of this stuff with CPI was not bad uh, looking forward towards that. Okay, so let's take a look at food unchanged massive right this is this is pretty good food away from home about the same uh let's take a look here energy commodities obviously up right this is a little bit what i was concerned about with it up 3.6 uh, however this is down on the 12 months adjusted uh, let me take a look at medical care services so down slightly for this which is positive transportation up minorly so i mean this is this is pretty good news right uh, owner's equivalent rose only 0.4% on the month. That was down from 0.6% uh, in January. You know, this is all decent stuff, right? If we're looking for a June rate cut, okay? And if we can maintain this kind of tight, you know, kind of program that we're on and we see inflation not being as bad uh, month over month, we'll be in a, in a good situation. And again, I think that's a lot of what this pricing in uh, is doing. And of course, if we get any rate um, decreases, you know, we're off to the races, as Tom says. 
uh, quite interesting. Let's take a look at Tesla, uh, 178.80. They had some issues. Their autopilot, along with some of their competitors, had been tested by some body, and they were received poor ratings for all of it. Of course, this is in its nascent stage, and I am sure we will see this, uh, this technology get better as we go on. Uh, but additionally, you're having a lot of competitors coming out of China with this, uh, and I, I think we'll see that become an issue for them in the coming years. And, and Tesla's the best poised, in my opinion, uh, to combat uh, these new Chinese EVs that are about to be hitting like Europe and, and probably to some extent America, unless we have some kind of tariff on them or embargo against it. But um, even Tesla themselves are saying they're, they're worried about it, right? So, I mean, what does that kind of say for the rest of the industry? Uh, Steel Dynamics, 131, of course, some pretty volatile movements. Uh, up to 137.70, and great. Dollar has been down. It cracked that 104 to 105 area, and we are at 102.97. Of course, we are up a little bit right now, but not a big deal. And the Qs up 1.34%, 443.25. I mean, even when you get some hot CPI, right? I mean, you, you still have the, I mean, obviously the Qs are up today, right? Our futures are up. The Russell just is doing Russell things. Uh, but the NQ is up in the, the Dow futures. So, you know, uh, I think the market is pretty confident that we'll see a rate cut uh, coming pretty soon. Give me one second uh, to get my timer up. All right. Let's take a look at some stories. This is what I wanted to say regarding Tesla. Oh, also, I want to say, too, if you because I just dealt with this beforehand, and this is just an off thing, but, you know, we... Uh, you know, we talked to some people from TD Ameritrade, which is now Schwab Network, and uh, we use Thinkorswim here. I was having some issues logging into Thinkorswim. It wasn't recognizing anything, uh, even when I went to reset my password. So I was talking to the guy, and what happens, I guess, sometimes it just became, uh, my, my account name became locked uh, because I logged in at too many different places. So if you're experiencing that, it is a pretty simple fix. You just got to know what to ask for. Anyways, I thought I was going to have a day without a trading platform. I was going to figure out how I was going to do that. All right, we'll take a look here. Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving technology and nine other assisted driving systems marketed by major automakers received poor ratings from the U.S. Insurance Institute of Highway Safety in a new study released on Tuesday. The IIHS safety research arm of the insurance industry also said there is no evidence that the autopilot uh, or other assisted driving systems uh, have real-world safety benefits based on crash data, right? I would be really interested to see that crash data, right? Like, is it... You know, how much of the autopilot was at fault regarding that? Yeah, I know there were some stories around what GM was trying to do uh, in California, and they had some situations. But I believe uh, the major one, which is uh, the, the car hitting a pedestrian, the pedestrian actually was drunk and fell into the car. Uh, so I'd be kind of interested to see um, how much of these autopilots, you, you know, were actually really at fault for it. Uh, we're able to look at insurance claims data. We have been able to look at vehicles with and without these systems and determine there is no reduction in claims as a result of these more advanced systems. And really, okay, so by comparison, there's evidence that automatic emergency braking system cut rear end collisions by 50% and cut incidents. I have that on my car and it is grading, but it does work. Anyways, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have Basil Chapman on with us next. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I want you guys to take a look at this over here. I'll give you a second. All right, it is up. This is the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman, okay? We talk with Basil uh, during this hour every Tuesday, and he gives us a little oversight of what he's doing. Very, very accurate technical work. Now, what is different about this week is that March 19th, so that's going to be next Tuesday, uh, Basil is having a live subscriber webinar, okay? So... This is 90 minutes long. This is for all subscribers of the opening call newsletter. Okay, so you don't have to pay anything extra. And this is from 4 o'clock to 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. He's going to be going over uh, everything you're going to need, the technical tools for the next few months, okay? Uh, critical 9 by 14, moving average crossover, the weekly Chapman wave buy mode, sector rotation, uh, rotation stock selection. Check this out, and I'll let Basil uh, kind of explain the rest there. Basil, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. What are we uh, taking a look at right now? I know this market has taken quite a turn almost from See, where we were a few very, months ago. <laughs> yeah, this is very important because within the context of, well, let me just go to what I'll be discussing on Tuesday. One of the technical tools that I've used forever is the 914 crossover. That means the nine period exponential moving average when it crosses positive, let me just go to this chart right here and show you what I'm talking about. When it crosses positive, um, and you can see this, these three lines here is made up, this is on the right, it's a gray line is the current Dow price. It's a daily chart. There was a low made October the 27th uh, in the Dow. And a few days later, it went from pink. You see this little line here? This pink mm. line went to green. And ever since then, that's November the 3rd, I believe it was, and November the 2nd. So November the 3rd was already green. And this is now so it's November, December, January, all of February, and part of March. And this one technical tool has been able to keep this price positive even when it turned down quite sharply back in mid-January and on the 17th dipped quite sharply, that nine-period moving average held and it, it remained green. And even here, and I have to say that in the long term, we've got a number of positions that are long the Dow for a couple of years now, actually, and even uh, from 2022, the, uh, the low that was made in October. But 
on a very short-term basis because it looks so much like this uh, on this chart right here that the green line period moving average was about to flip negative, which would be the first time, as I say, since it crossed positive back in November, it flipped to positive. And even today, it started to look weak, and then it came back strongly. So this is the one tool. Now, we do have a very short-term short position on the Dow. So far, that's still uh, active. And what's very important here is that if you look at this one technical tool, which I'll be explaining and, and going through with different charts on uh, Tuesday the 19th, is that the distance SPX.X, the distance above the line is so important. You can see on this is the chart as we're looking at it right now. The S&P is at 57 to 51.75, and it's above the green nine period moving average and above the black period moving average. And here again, although we are looking out the weekly charts, we are very positive. On a short term, I'm anticipating some kind of a pullback. So we've actually implemented a, a small short position. This is just as a trade. But that green period moving average is not much. It's been absolutely beautiful. Look at the QQQ. That's the NDX 100. And it's the same, same thing. Uh, this one's a little more detailed because you actually get the candles. This is a QQQ. This is the on balance volume. It's been pulling back. There's a divergence here. So you're not quite getting the volume flow through in the NDX 100. So the nine period moving average is still positive. There was a moment in January where for a day it flipped to pink. Other than that, from the low that was made back in October the 26th, this one indicator has kept the price above the, the nine period moving average except for those two days, period, uh, different days. So, but you can see it's getting closer and closer that nine period moving average is getting closer to the black line. That's the 14 period moving average. If it turns pink, we can anticipate we've got some kind of a sell on the daily chart. We've got some kind of a selling uh, phase going on, and we'll see how that implements the weekly chart. So that's one thing. Then I talk about the channel wave notation, and when we get buy modes, what does that mean? Well, in this particular instance, look, going back to the Dow, the Dow is still above the nine period exponential moving average in the weekly chart and the daily, but look at the weekly chart, how strong that is. And it's in leg B. In the Chapman Wave methodology, once you get a buy signal that gets upgraded to a buy mode, which the weekly is, it should go to at least four higher peaks. That's alphabetized. It's peak A. The next one's peak B. The next higher peak is C and then D. It can go E, F, and G, but D is your objective in a buy mode. So the long term is still very positive for the Dow weekly, and the monthly chart is only in leg C. So I, I'm just explaining these are the different technical tools that I use. These are core tools, and I'll be going through them in, in great detail. Then another thing I talk about is round numbers. Now, this is the, num the number of round numbers. The round number is, let me just give you an example. I thought I'd grab this just on the spur of the moment. Uh, NVIDIA. Everyone's talking about NVIDIA. NVIDIA made an all-time high uh, three days ago. What did it do when it made the all-time high? It hit a round number, 974.00. It had a quick pullback. There are a bunch of round numbers, and it made an eight, uh, 871 low the other day, uh, yesterday and today. It's got a 912 round number, 912.00 round number. I mean, I, I've just, the only time I've ever seen it in not these numbers, but in great numbers was back in, the crash of 19, on October the 19th, 1984, uh, 1987. And that day I said, I've never seen such round numbers. And that was the signal for a major buy signal, but that was on the way down. So I'm watching this very closely because uh, I wanted to do another one, ARM. This is Arm Holdings. Made it about uh, two and a half, three weeks ago, it made a round number high of 164.00 on the 12th of February, here it is at 128. It, it, all this time, it hasn't been able to surpass that. So I'll be talking about round numbers, what the usual implication is, and what this huge cluster will be, which I'll do over this weekend. I'll try to do a study on this, because I've never seen so many, even 
what was it, Costco, I believe. Yeah, Costco makes an all-time high. And very soon after that, it makes a, a, the day before, it makes a 775. It opens at a round number. So my thinking here is that these round numbers, especially when they're at the open, it's like fear of missing out. Someone wants it so desperately, they just, because you can go through chart after chart and you won't find the round number. So that's one thing that I'm looking at. What's the implication? Then I'll be looking at sector rotation. We've already seen that the the semis are getting pretty overbought any way you, you measure them. We'll be looking at how gold is starting to move, some of the uh, commodities are starting to move. So I'll be looking at the rotation, where we can go. Uh, I like Bank of America, we still have, so the financials are still doing well. Fantastic. So that's what it's gonna involve. Awesome, and I'll talk about this when we get back from the break, but Basil, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, that was thank fantastic, I cannot you. wait for it. Stay right there, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. All right, welcome back, folks. That's right. The last segment we had, we were talking with Basil Chapman. Again, if, you're, if you never subscribed to the opening call newsletter, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If for whatever reason it doesn't fit with your style or whatnot, uh, but again, I will say that this is super accessible. 
uh, for first time traders, excuse me, first time subscribers. If you're just getting into trading, do it. If you've been in trading for a long time, you should do it. And uh, come check out this webinar. And, and Basil is so good at this, right? Doing these, uh, excuse me, doing these webinars uh, for subscribers. So again, check this out. The 914 moving average. This is the weekly Chapman wave buy mode. Deciphering the rare flood of round numbers, what he just talked about. So check the archive later if you didn't see that sector rotation stock selection live question and answers come check it out now let's change a little bit here we have someone else on the line this is one of my favorite guests that we have on this is tim ord of the ord hyphen oracle.com uh, you know i've been filling in for tom a lot over the past uh you know month or two and i've gotten to speak with him quite a bit and it is just it is so in-depth and amazing his analysis right and he's been calling this bullish move in gold and we have seen gold just make some stellar movements you know so has tom in his gold report newsletter again check that out uh but we are with tim right now tim are you there yeah i'm here so thanks for having me on again absolutely thank you for coming on tim i i really i look forward to this so i'm yeah. interested to see what you have for us today all right uh we'll start in chart one perfect we'll, we'll take a look at the bigger picture and um it's just a simple chart uh, chart one is the uh, SPX uh, going back to uh, 2016. I keep kind of showing this chart, but you usually start off with the bigger time frames, show where you are in the bigger time frames, and we'll kind of drop back, go down to the weekly. We'll go down to the daily uh, and, and try to figure out exactly you know, what the market's going to do on the short term basis. But on the bigger time frames, we may stall here a little bit. Well, the reason why I circled the times when the uh, monthly SPX, 50% of that trading range closes above the upper Bollinger Band. And so all those red circles there mm -hmm. are times when at least 50% of the trading range for that month closed above the mid Bollinger Band. And normally when that happens, you get a little stalled market. Sometimes it's just a, a minor stall for maybe a month. And sometimes they uh, call big declines like back in October 2000, or that would have been probably uh, January of 2020, right before the the uh, March crash. But anyhow, if you notice, uh, the month of February did close above the uh, upper Bollinger Band by 50%. And I got two uh, circles there that are kind of um, thick, thick circles. Right. And I'm thinking... The, the previous time, the back in 2021, I got a circle there. It, it's probably going to be similar to that because this market's not really set up to have a big decline. We're probably in a trending market, probably similar to that 2021. Looks like about January time frame looks about that, right? Where the market kept trending up. Sure. And I think in this this month, probably will, uh, we're open and closed. Probably pretty close to the same level, yeah, even though we're about halfway done uh, with the month and the market acts we're long, and uh, uh, I may be a seller before the week is out. But uh, we may hit a, uh, we are hitting a new high here, but I don't think that high is going to last. I think he's going to pull back. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, the month of March, even though we're up uh, decently, I don't think we're going to end up this high before the month is out. But on a bigger time frame, I think it's just kind of a stalled market. Mm. March is pretty much sideways, and uh, then from there, I think April is going to be up. March is going to be up. Fantastic. So, but anyhow, uh, over the next thirty days, I think it's going to be kind of a, a trading range market, but not any deep decline of any consequence. So, if you're a short-term trader, you know we're still long. I think I'll be long probably until maybe Thursday or Friday this week then uh, I may pull the trigger and get out. Uh, but let's flip to chart two real quick. Sure. And you know what's so good um, is I'm flipping to chart two, like with these minor pullbacks, is it's just good to get in at that time, you know? Obviously, it's a longer-term play, but I love seeing those little pullbacks. So we're on chart two right now. Yeah, we just, yeah, this pullback. You know, I, I actually got long last Friday. Nice. There's a couple of different reasons. Uh, this week is the strongest eighth Seasonality-wise, it's the strongest week of the 52 weeks of the year. And ironically, next week is the ninth weakest week of the year. Mm -hmm. So, And these seasonies, uh, seasonalities work out pretty good, but I need other confirmation, you know, because I won't just go off the of seasonality alone because, 
you know, you're kind of shooting in the dark. But uh, so I'm thinking March is going to be just a sideways uh, month. But anyhow, let's go to chart two. And this gives me a little uh, uh, confidence that uh, any pullback should be minor. Anyhow, I got some bunch of stuff. But this is the weekly SPX going back to 2008 or 9, 2009. But what I want to point out, this is a weekly chart, and the top window is the uh, RSI for the uh, weekly R, uh, for the weekly SPX. And normally when the RSI gets up around 80 to 85, it's never the final high. You have minor pullbacks, which I think is going to happen in March, you know, kind of a sideways month, but it's never the final high. So this gives me confidence that, so if we do pull back here later this month or beginning at 1st April, I'll probably be a buyer. And one of the reasons why is because this chart did hit 80 as we're, as I did the chart today. Yesterday we closed at 77.91. Well, it's not quite 80, but it's close enough. I mean, this this is not exact science. It has to be 80 and it can't be over 85, right. but anywhere from 88 to probably 86 is legitimate. But we're hitting right smack at the 80 level right now on a weekly time frame. And we may uh, hit 80 this week if the market holds up, which I think it will. Uh, so we may, uh, but anyhow, this chart, again, once you hit between 80, 85, it's never the last or the final high. Most have uh, minor pullbacks, but normally you head higher. So we're probably in a trending market is what this says, because that's, that's the only time when this indicator hits 80. And all the red lines I have drawn back, it doesn't happen every, you know, a lot, but when it does, uh, it's worth uh, noting. So those little circles on the chart are the times when this RSI on the weekly time frame hit 80. So uh, when it happens, you know, it, it goes several years. Sometimes we don't get RSI 80 on a weekly chart. So it's pretty rare. And But the times it has did it, the market in general just kept marching higher. So I'm thinking we're in a uh, kind of a march up type period here. So I guess we're getting close to a break, aren't we? Yeah, we get about eight seconds left. So we can switch to chart three a little bit. Um, uh, all right, uh, chart three. Uh, this is the daily RSI. Huh. And, it, and there we are with right, the, uh, the break. Yeah, let's, right. let's hold this for the next break because I think this deserves, you know, a full thing. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. 
Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We're with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord-Oracle.com. Tim, I think we were talking about the weekly RSI. This is chart three before we went to break. Actually, that was chart two. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Which is the weekly RSI hitting uh, uh, the 80 to 85 area then we flip to chart three perfect and it's the same story and it's, so you got the weekly and you got the daily mm -hmm. both rsi so you got a lot these these type of readings especially when you get the weekly and daily back both hit in the 80 that um that's a momentum market and so you're dealing with a momentum market and and uh, i listed all those times when uh, the rsi on the daily going back i don't know quite a few years but a lot of times that shows up about the midpoint of the move and the uh, rsi on the daily i think it was around december it's not early january the 80 rsi uh hit for the daily so um in general this kind of you can do a little bit of a gauge here you're probably going to run all the way into july before the market actually starts uh, breaking up a little bit and at least create a, a, a larger consolidation but between now and July, all well, you're going to have maybe at most a 3% pullback, which I don't think we'll even get that. But you'll have some pullback weeks, uh, but nothing significant. And even, you know, like March, I think there's going to be a, a sideways market here for the month of March. But you're not going to find a 5 or 10% pullback in this type of environment because momentum kind of rules all indicators. If market pulls back, it turns around and goes right back up. And that's what's probably going to keep happening here until July. So, but moving on, so we've got momentum market. So what's that mean right now? Well, let's flip to chart four. Okay. Let me get and, it up. Uh, Perfect. Perfect. Are you there? Oh, yeah. We're good to go. All right. Chart four, the top window is the 10-day trend uh, of the um, – uh, arms index and it goes back to uh, looks like about a, almost two years or close to it but anyhow I mark the times when the 10-day trend gets below 0.9 and all those little tan areas and actually uh, um, yeah the tan areas are times when the 10-day trend gets below 0.9 and uh, when the two-day trend gets down below 0.5 you're also you can have some short-term highs but we're 0.92 right now, and the market's rallying, uh, and it may rally the rest of this week. I think the most powerful point of seasonality is actually tomorrow and Thursday. Okay. Uh, for uh, So whatever's going on right now is probably going to continue for at least the next two days. And Friday is kind of a toss-up, but uh, the next week is probably down. But uh, this is one of the clues that it's going to give you that once you get down below 0.9, you're probably going to do for consolidation. Sometimes there are uh, decent consolidations, but most of the time it's just kind of a timeout and an uptrend. So next week is down probably. Uh, this 
10-day trend hitting below 0.9 is, is a warning sign. It kind of helps me with the uh, um, seasonality telling that, yeah, probably next week could be a down week. So this kind of tells me, supports that idea. So let's flip to chart five. Okay. We're going to break it down even more here. So the 10-day trend's not there yet. It's 0.92, but it's probably close enough, you know, because these numbers are not set in stone. You know, sometimes 0.92 is, is the exact number. Sometimes it has to get down to 0.88 or whatever. But 0.9 range is a danger range. So we're there pretty much right there. But this this chart uh, is the, the um, middle window is the SPX t- tilt ratio on the daily time frame. Uh, so this is using racial analysis now. So you're comparing the SPX market to the bond market. And so what happens here is is one is going up against the other too fast or going down too fast. It, it creates uh, an RSI surge, whether up or down. And the 10-day uh Ten day RSI for the SPX tilt ratio seems to work the best. So it's a two week type uh, RSI, not a 14 day, but a 10 day. So it's a two week RSI. But if you notice, we had some minor pullbacks here. If you go down to all those blue times when the, uh, all those blue lines are times when the RSI hit above 70, and the red lines are when the RSI hit below 30. Hmm. So if you notice, it works pretty well. Matter of fact, back in uh, uh, yeah December of 2024, we're testing the highs of August of 2023, and that was one of the reasons why I was kind of bullish here because the RSI of that uh, SPX tilt ratio was below 30, so that was a bullish sign back in and uh, but December of 2023 so we kind of rallied up and we got a couple of blue lines there and there were just minor pullbacks that lasted maybe a week week and a half nothing uh too major and right now the RSI for this ratio is coming in 59 uh so but but right now uh the market's rallying so if the SPX keeps rallying like it is this is Earlier in the day when the SPX was pretty much flat, I mean, it was up a little bit, but not much. Right. And uh, so I'm thinking this RSI 10 for this SPX tilt ratio is going to get back up to 70 probably before this week is out. And that would be quite a bit of, you know, evidence, I guess, that, yeah, we are probably going into a short-term high we could do for a, a week, um, you know, a week, maybe two weeks of uh, consolidation, nothing real significant but uh, but we're not there yet so right now you know it's 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 i think we're still clear that the market can move higher on a short-term basis so i'm kind of putting the cart in front of the horse here a little bit because sure. i'm anticipating some of these indicators to work out but we'll have to wait and see if it does work out but uh, I'm, I'm thinking for the weeks that we're probably going to see somewhere sort of high this week so on Thursday, when we're back on the air, uh, I bet we're back up around that 70 range. So we'll, I'll put this chart in in, um, in the bin, so we'll, we'll bring it back up and see totally. where we are. Awesome. But uh, on a short-term basis here, I'm still I'm still bullish. So we can go to chart six. We got time. Yeah, we have about a minute and a half left, and then just about two minutes on the last break. If you want to stay for that, to you know, call numbers or call chart seven. So. Okay. Uh, okay. This chart is kind of a sh- short term. Anyhow, it's uh, the bottom window is the uh, GDX 18 day average of GDX advanced decline. Next higher window is GDX up down volume with an 18 day average. I want to point out in this chart when this chart gets up to plus 40 on both those indicators, and I mark the times going back to 2014, that happened. A lot of times they happen in surge markets, so that's a blue line. So it happened five times going back. So it's pretty rare going back to 2014. It happened five times. So when it does happen, it's it's you know it's not like once a year or twice a year. It's one every year or a couple three years. But when it does happen, uh, if you get a surge in the advanced decline and up down volume, it's usually the beginning 
Oops, okay, I hear the music. Yeah, just stay right there. We, Like I said, it'll be like three minutes on the last break, Tim, but I would like to hear the end of this if you got it, because the GDX is so important right. right now. So, folks, stay right there. We're going to do a quick wrap-up with Tim Ord when we get back from the break. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We've got about two and a half minutes left. And Tim, I would love to hear some closing thoughts on the GDX and just gold in general here. All right. What I want this, you know, this market just really took off like a, a banshee over the last uh, week or so. Yeah. Market, I think, is up seven, eight days in a row. We're consolidating today. But I want these two indicators, uh, the bottom two windows, the 18-day average, up-down volume, advanced client indicators, 18-day average, to hit above plus 40. Uh, we, we did it five times last, uh, going back 2016. The time that didn't work was last April. We got up to... Uh, plus 40 on both indicators and normally you surge higher for another at least two months if not six months so we got one failure but the other four worked so we got an 80 percent chance if we do get to plus 140 that the market will surge for another two months to six months and i'm hoping that happens i think the, it may just the way we came off this bottom because uh, this the market on gdx just went vertical and you get something like that, normally you get a consolidation and you get another vertical coming. And if we do get that another vertical coming, we get to plus 40, that opens the door probably 
rally all the way into July. That's why I'm thinking it's probably going to happen. Now, if that happens, we go to chart seven real quick. Okay. This is the whole key to the market. You want the strong market. Uh, the bottom window is a cumulative advanced decline, and the top window is a cumulative up-down volume. You need both those indicators to get above the mid-Bollinger Band. And I marked the times in the past when you're above the mid-Bollinger Band, it's blue. When you're below the mid-Bollinger Band, it's, it's a red line. We've been below the uh, the mid-Bollinger Band going back to 2021. So we really haven't been in a bull market yet as far as the markets. We've been in basically a bear market since 2021. We need a close above the mid-Bollinger Band. And for that to happen, we need the up-down volume advanced client indicator so a surge of strength here. And that's what I think they could be setting up. Tim, thank you so much. That was a fantastic analysis as always. And guys, that is Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is ord-oracle.com. Tim, thank you so much, and we're going to hear from you Thursday. Great. Talk to you Thursday. Thanks a lot. Take care now. Folks, thank you so much for listening. It was great filling in for Tom again and being with you all. Hope you have a great rest of your day. we got Tommy on tomorrow at 9 a.m., then Basil, Steve, Larry, and then the Tom O'Brien Show. Take care.